cops around, criminals are going to show up and they're going to take advantage of the chaos. Yes. Period. And you're not going to tell me that, no, uh, the cops will always be there. Look what happened in Canada. The guy stole a gun from a cop, killed the cop, and went on a rampage killing spree for almost 12, 13 hours. He shut down an entire city by himself. That one is a weird one, and I was reading something about it last night. See if you can find this, that he withdrew a huge um, amount of money, like more than 400... Yeah, I saw this. Shit, yeah. are you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He withdrew more than $400,000 from a bank account. How does he even, How was he even able to do that? Exactly. And there's some concern that this might have been some sort of intelligence operation, that there's something more to this mm. story. Because they were talking about the way he got that money, that it very well yeah. could have been that he was involved in something gotcha. on, a, on a totally different level. The Nova Scotia shooter case has hallmarks of an undercover operation. Police say the killer's withdrawal, $475,000, was highly irregular, and how the RCMP agent would get money. How an RCMP, I don't know what that, Royal Canadian Mounted Police, I think that is, uh, withdrawal, $475,000 in cash by the man who killed twenty two Nova Scotians in April matches the method that is Royal Canadian Mountain Poli Mounted Police, right? I Uses to send money to confidential informants and agents, sources say. Gabriel Watman, who is responsible for the largest mass killing in Canadian history, withdrew the money from a Brinks deposit in Dartmouth, uh, Nova Scotia. March 30th, stashing a carry-all filled with $100 bills in the trunk of his car. Wow. But my thing is, is like this. For an operation that complex, you think they'd be that sloppy? Yeah. Yeah, they're filled with people. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's government. And they're Canadians, so they're actually nice. Sources in both banking and the RCMP say the transaction is consistent with how the RCMP funnels money to its confidential informants and agents and is not an option available to fr private banking customers. The RCMP has repeatedly said that it has no, in quotes, special relationship with Wartman, which means the regular relationship. Yeah. <laughs> Court documents show that Wartman owned a New Brunswick registered company called Berkshire Broman, the legal owner of two of his vehicles, including one of the police replica cars. Oh, he was a crazy person. He had a police replica yeah, car? Yeah, he had a lot of them. Whatever the purpose of the company, there's no public evidence that could have been able to move large quantities of cash. Wartman also ran his own... What is a denturist business? You make fake teeth. Is that what it is? Yeah. Denturist? Yeah, it's basically a dentist. Oh, wow. Okay, so he had a fake teeth business? Yeah. And there's no reason to believe that it would also require, that it would, uh, it, it also would require him to handle large amounts of cash. If Wartman is, or was an RCMP informant or agent, it would explain why the force appeared not to take action on complaints about his illegal guns and his assault on his common law wife. Hmm. Whoa. So he might have been a fucking informant. So he might have been working for the government. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Because there's a lot I'm of not sick. Say it doesn't make listen, sense. there's a lot of sick fucks in all lines of business, yeah. including dentists. How many dentists have been accused of feeling up ladies after they put them under? Right? I have. Yeah. 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 I've yeah. Heard, yeah. There's some sick fucks yeah. that are in all lines of work, including informants. Plus, informants like you're a fucking rat. Yeah. So he's a he's a rat that went bad. Yeah. Could be. So there's complex. There's a complex yeah, backstory to that much guy. So, very much so. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Nonetheless, it still happened. <laughs> yeah. I don't. The, the, and, but then again, it's funny because immediately after that. Yes. Unilaterally, Tr Trudeau basically said, Poop, "No more guns." Yeah. At least no more. No, no more assault, assault rifles, rifles which are yeah. which drive gun people crazy. <sighs> yes, because. What does that mean? All right. So a, a, assault rifle. An assault rifle is a, to, to put it simply. And I'm going to try to explain this in plain language for people who don't know any different. Most people think when they see a, hear assault rifle, they think a machine gun, which is fully automatic or semi-automatic. I'm not semi-automatic, fully automatic or um, burst. Basically, it's like three rounds at a time each time you pull the trigger. That's an assault rifle. AR-15s are not assault rifles. Right. Single shot. Yeah. It's a single shot gun. You pull the trigger once, you get one bullet. It's kind of synonymous. It's like, it's like comparing a... Rolls Royce to a Chrysler 300. Yeah, why do they call it an assault rifle then? Because it looks badass? Well, why does who call it an assault rifle? Why do people call an AR an assault rifle? Well, because that's the language used by the anti-gunners who are pushing an agenda. 
So what they want to do is they want to closely tie the idea of a machine gun that people largely see being used in movies to what's being sold on the street. So the distinction would be automatic versus semi-automatic. semi-automatic. Yes. And the difference between an AR is you don't have to cock it like a bolt action rifle every time you fire a shot. Yes. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And that's one of the, like one of the arguments in the hunting world is that you don't need an AR and it's not it wouldn't be effective and I've actually heard people say that. I'm like no. <laughs> No, as a hunter, it would be more effective yeah. because oftentimes you need a second, second shot. shot. You need to get that shot up But fast. you can get out that second shot instantly. Yeah. Bang, yeah. bang. But it's, like it's instantly. Uh, ironically, that's the same argument they'll use to why we need to ban them. Mm-hmm. Because it allows a shooter to shoot in, it allows a shooter to shoot yeah. faster than normal. And then I'll argue that's why we need them for self defense. Yeah, again, it becomes <laughs> one of those like really messy people problems. Yeah. Like it's a messy That's it's, the common yeah. denominator behind all of it. Yep. It's people. the people. People. But With now the they've even what they'll do is they'll try to invalidate that argument. It was like it's, the, it's not a good problem, it's a people problem. And they'll try to and they'll try to undermine it by acting like it's just a stupid trope. Yeah. But it's the truth. Well, I, I made a tweet a long time ago that said this country has a mental health problem disguised as a gun problem. Mm-hmm. I agree with you. That's really what it is. I absolutely agree with you. That's really what it is. It's And this is one thing that never gets discussed. Whenever one of these people does something really fucked up, they don't look at the amount of medication these people are on. You know, it's funny. They don't. They don't. They and they're really almost don't. all on medication. Almost all. There's a common denominator, guns and medication. medication. And one gets looked at very closely and the Another other gets one. blatantly ignored. Why do you think that is? Because the pharmaceutical industry has a shitload of money, and there's a lot of these politicians that are in the pocket of yeah. the pharmaceutical industry. They they have a firm grip on the, the narrative. and So they, the gun is a perfect scapegoat. Yeah, and they also don't want all the other people that are on these psychotropic medications to feel bad that they're on them, that they could be lumped in with these same mm. people. That Like, imagine if we just started... Like if it's SSRIs or mm-hmm. antidepressants or, or, or anti-anxiety medication, imagine if that becomes the narrative in the news. Yeah. Like that people on SSRIs are fucking dangerous.